I want to give you an update on my uh, plant experiments, propag trying to propagate in rock wool and uh, some, some other new plants I'm kind of testing out. So unfortunately we've had some uh, mold issues with some of these. They, they have rooted fine. You can see all the roots in there, but um, mold has been kind of a problem for a few of these plants. That was, that was purple, uh, purple waffle plant. Uh, Hemographis exotica and you know they were in this little 10 gallon tank I had to move them over because they just weren't getting enough airflow in here and it's a humid time of year anyway but especially out here in the greenhouse so um, so these plants that were in rock wool have actually done pretty well you can see the roots coming down that purple waffle plant, that's another hemographis, and then the spider plant in the middle, it's starting to have roots come down. But I think the best one has been this ajuga or bugle weed. It's a, uh, actually a native plant to the U.S. and um, it's, it, it's just sent off a lot of roots. And then I've got another one over here that has not been growing in rock wool. It's just loosely placed in that cup and it's really got a lot of roots coming out. So, you know, whether it's in rock wool or not, it seems to really respond well to growing in water, which makes sense because in its native environment, natural habitat, so to speak, um, it does like a good bit of moisture and it doesn't need a lot of light either. So, over here we've got this Carex, which I think is wood sedge, and I believe the species is Blanda, Carex Blanda, but I'm not sure, I'm not the best at identifying Carex because there's so many different ones, so many that look alike. It's got a few trying to come out here and there, but I've actually got this same Carex growing in the house with just the roots loosely suspended in the water and it's actually doing better that way um, and then I've got a few scattered around this one which is getting too shaded I need to cut the peace lily leaves off but but this one's over a month old I guess two months old now and it's just growing in a substrate aqua soil fluorite and kitty litter I think is the mixture and uh, anyway, it's, it's still doing fine. There's some more bugle weed right there growing in, in kitty litter. Ludwigia, just the native Ludwigia, is, is doing pretty great growing in that kitty litter. I don't think I showed you on the last video, but I've actually got some Sansevieria or some snake plant growing in here couple different species but sending out new roots and it's doing pretty well I've always heard that, that snake plant can grow hydroponically but I've just never tried it before so I'm trying it out now it seems to be doing pretty well and of course all of the mangrove is doing good sending out those new roots I'm really encouraged by that I think this is going to be really cool in this stock tank having some, having some mangrove in the back but also in the guppy tank these mangrove have really grown a lot and I don't know if you can see down there the glare is pretty bad but you can kind of see a few of those red roots coming down in, in the background They're starting to get top heavy. They may need a more permanent. There we go. May need a more permanent uh, setup to hold them in place because they've really put on a lot of new growth. I'm encouraged by that. So all this water wisteria is just exploding in here. It's doing awesome. I'm uh, maintaining really good water clarity. Kind of hard to see. Um, all the duckweed has been slowly dying out, frog bit, 
has been dominating as a floating plant. We've got some guppy grass that's growing in here and it keeps multiplying as well which is a good sign. Now over here we've got this Kalingia or I think it's Cypiris brevifolius now is the scientific name and it's kind of getting lanky here it's just really not getting enough light I think we're needing more light not getting enough with with the uh, with being under this monstera kind of the same with this purple waffle plant it's really kind of trying to stretch toward the light this way um, and over there it's reaching for a lot more light as well so it's actually more shaded under here than I thought it would be and then you know having mold issues with this spider plant it's kind of struggling so I've got a fan that I run in here and I, I was only running it during the day and it was a mistake to not run it at night as well and with just being in such a humid environment humid climate especially in this greenhouse it's really making a big difference having having airflow 24 7 so hopefully things can recover that are that are struggling with mold mildew whatever but this um, more narrow leaf carex or cypiris whichever one again these are difficult for me to identify but it's also doing well i'm really excited to see how how much this has grown and sending out some roots down at the bottom not a tremendous amount but it's uh it's continuing to grow which is a good sign and then this wildflower um, that still haven't been able to identify i'm gonna have to wait until it blooms which is in late summer and early fall it actually blooms and i'm gonna maybe it'll be easier for me to identify but it is a native or at least naturalized wildflower and um, it's not getting quite enough nutrients that it needs growing in the rock wool like this in the tank but i think it does have promise as a riparian plant growing in a more substantial substrate like the you know like the mixture of of uh, aqua soil and iron and um, kitty litter something like that it would do a lot better growing in that this japanese sweet flag a chorus so it had it had more growth on the bottom here but they died out again mold mildew and all that but it definitely has roots coming down So it, it's heading in the right direction and of course this has definitely been a long-standing repairing plant for a lot of people many years I've just never used it much myself not yet anyway but I'm going to lucky bamboo is doing growing well sending out new roots so new roots and new leaves are always a good sign when you're experimenting with riparian plants so i think what i'm going to do now i think i've pretty much decided that this 29 gallon is going to become the white cloud colony well i knew that but it's going to be a white cloud riparium i was trying to grow some some narrow leaf pugostemon but it's actually doing better in this 10 gallon tank much better than it was here and so I decided to transfer what was left of the, the pogostim into this tank so this is going to be strictly for uh, aquarium plants I've got some uh, water sprite down in there I've got some parrot's feather I'm trying to grow in the substrate let it come to the surface some penny wart and more more cuttings of that bogus stemmen. so anyway this is going to become a riparium i'm going to i'm going to take all of the riparian plants that are in the white cloud tub at the moment and transfer them over here of course transfer the fish as well but i'm kind of torn about when to transfer the everything because it's doing so well i mean if you can, you can do, do this without a glare and that water is super clear you know I'm seeing a lot of fish in there a lot of, a lot of fry the java fern or the java moss and the guppy grass is really growing like crazy in there 
making it a great area for breeding. But yeah, I can see lots of little babies swimming around. So I'm hesitant to, since I got a good thing going there, I'm hesitant to, to, to make a change. Of course, I need to eventually, but it's hard to know when. But the fry in this bucket, I don't know if you can see them, they're actually much more visible now. I tell you, trying to shoot video in a greenhouse is tough with lighting. Yeah, there's several in there that I can see. You can kind of get a glimpse of them. There's several in there, and they've really grown a lot. And I've just been feeding them every day. Of course, they're feeding off of the algae in there as well. So that's really encouraging. Got got a few good things going on here. The Ludwigia that I've tr been trying to grow in this rock wool is not doing quite as well as I thought it would. And not sure how much of that is due to low light, insufficient light, or the mold and mildew situation. Like this Rotala just totally caved. The Syngonium kind of had some issues there with that new leaf coming out, but it's got new new roots coming out, so it's it's doing well growing in the rock wool. Now the the neon pothos that I had it just rotted, didn't do well. I think it was growing back here. It just rotted. This ribbon plant's rotting too, although. There's new growth trying to come up from the, the bottom. So it's still alive, still surviving, but this one seems to, it just seems to root better in freestanding water. But this is the ribbon plant right here, more mature. This one's a little over two years old now. And um, I, I cut off a good bit of it that was on this side in order to have cuttings. And so, I've got some cuttings going just in soil because I wanted to get a potted plant of it. Everything outside the greenhouse is looking really nice. This um, Pontederia is coming up, blooming really well. Pickerel weed. Pickerel weed's looking great. Got some salvias blooming, which the hummingbirds really love. This, this Bengal tiger canna is really exploding. I mean, a lot of new growth, doing really great. And those are the white star hibiscus seedlings coming up. I've got something eating on them, so I need to probably transplant them out of that pot and into their own pots. Maybe even spray them with something. Got some new uh, shoots coming up on this Tropicana and we had some wind damage due to some storms we had uh, like last week so some of this broke off but new shoots are coming back out so that is looking good um, got, a, got a few things going in here like this Rotala I'm trying to grow it in the soil and then you know have a, an established stock of it growing in soil and then I can take cuttings using the aquariums but I've got this Bowles Golden Sedge, kind of a rescue plant, but it's got new new shoots coming up. A few cuttings of Bacopa down in there too. Hoping to get those going. This Marble Queen Pothos in there actually survived a, a freeze that we had in the early spring, and I thought for sure it had killed that Pothos, but it's slowly coming back out. Wouldn't that be interesting if we could develop a frost-resistant species of pothos? Of course, that would be pretty dangerous because it can get invasive in the tropical regions of the world. But this hibiscus sawfly larva or caterpillar has really been tearing up these red star hibiscus. But they're still blooming. We've got one faded bloom up there from yesterday. But anyway, the other ones are starting to... Uh, starting to get eaten up as well and I'm not going to try to spray these it's just kind of not, not much point in it right now but we've got some red star hibiscus flowers that have been opening up and I've, of course I've been feeding the caterpillars occasionally to the uh, fish in the, in the greenhouse you see one right there so it works out oh here's one just touching that leaf I had one fall in my hand So anyway, here's my my stock of Japanese sweet flag, the iris, the new iris that I got, 
walking iris. It's, all this is one new one new blade coming up, and you have another blade coming up, so that's a good sign. This sweet Kate spider wart is, I don't think it is sweet Kate, because it should be nice and yellow by now. Should be the same color as this uh, Japanese sweet flag. So, um, still want to get some sweet Kate though.